Hey guys, welcome to System Design Fight Club. We are going to cover chapter six of Alex Hsu's upcoming machine learning system design book. It is on video recommendation system for uh, YouTube. Um, so uh, all I have is the title to go off of. I've gone through some resources that have some pretty decent information on how to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of going off the title. Um, uh, requirements will be that a user can see videos that are recommended for them, like similarly to the YouTube uh, homepage. And then um, the user's watch history is recorded as they're watching videos. Um, this is kind of like not the crucial requirement. This is the crucial requirement. Um, a call out is that um, there's, uh, I, I've, I've seen some talks by, I think the director of YouTube at Google, and I guess the explore exploit problem is kind of like an important thing that's normally brought up in the context of this problem. Um, like it's it's like a thing that they have to consider for the design of um, YouTube's homepage. Um, it's, I, I don't think that uh, reinforcement learning is actually applied to this problem, but normally when the explore exploit problem is brought up, uh, reinforcement learning is uh, relevant, but um, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not actually used in their solution. Uh, for the data model, uh, it's going to be split into um, two services that are handling getting those results out. There's first this thing that generates candidate videos. It's candidates for what they might watch. And then it takes that list of candidate videos and they are ranked, which determines the order that they are actually displayed on, on the uh, homepage. Um, all right, with that, let's go ahead and get started on the diagram. So uh, I had uh, two um, requirements. Those correspond to um, two parts where the um, client is kind of interacting with the service. One of them is where the user is um, watching a video. Uh, watching a video and it's collecting uh, their their uh, data while it's doing that. Um, and then we have um, user viewing um, video recommendations doing video recommendations. Okay, and so this one's gonna interact with the video recommendation service. I have the video recommendation service. Yep. Then you should have, uh, for this one, I'm gonna have a um, data collection service, video data collection service. Okay, um, and so that will have uh, the data will be going into their user watch history, which is an important thing for generating the candidates, uh, the candidate videos, um, the the uh, videos that are getting recommended changes as you're watching it actively. It's it's um, in a uh, kind of like real time recommendations, and the uh, user watch history is used for that. And so that is why we're going to have a user watch history. Uh, database over here. Okay, I think we could use some arrows now. Um, so as a user is watching a video, that would be their user ID and some video ID. I hate the font, let's fix that. There we go. And then it is going to log that information to the user watch history. The database replies, yep, I got it and then you get back your 200 success uh, quietly. It's just kind of doing that like while you're watching the video. Um, and so we can just go ahead and write a little 200 over there, 200 okay status. Um, and so we've got the video recommendation service too. Um, and so you will have your user ID um, sent over to it as you're pulling up your homepage. It's just kind of going off with your user ID. And then um, I said that there's going to be two components to this. There's the candidate generation, and then there's the ranking service. 
Um, so let's draw those. We got the um, candidate uh, generation service, and then we have the ranking service. Just like that. Okay, and so first uh, we're gonna get the candidates. We have the user ID and we're sending that over to the candidate service first. And that is going to have, they, these are both going to have a data model. Uh, this one will have, um, I don't think I talked about that. It's uh, a recommender system. This one is a recommender system. Uh, we've had a lot of those for this book. Um, there's there's definitely a lot of recommendation engine systems in uh, this book. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be a collaborative filtering approach. Uh, it'll specifically be model based or a latent factor model. Uh, I can I think it's named either way, and it's going to use this special thing called matrix factorization, um, which is where uh, the user uh, the user item or user video table in this case is, is split into two. There's this, uh, this user, um, set. And then there's like this, like, uh, um, uh, video set and it has the features on each. I think it's used for creating these like embedding things. Um, let me go ahead and kind of like draw that. Okay, and this will have uh, rows equals users, and then we'll have columns equals features, and then we have another one, and this one's for the videos, and again, it's the, the features. Yep, and um, it's going to pull in data from the user watch, history, that's one data source. Uh, the other data sources are the user um, feature store uh, and the video feature store. Let's start with the video feature store. And we'll have the user feature store. And we're gonna read both of these in. And then I wanna draw how I've read that the data model seems to work. So it's, um, it is a classifier. Um, it's for this method, I think I've heard that um, usually uses a uh, stochastic, gradient descent, and then um, trying to make sure I draw this for all of them since I didn't get that on um, a lot of the resources that I was using while trying to learn these. Um, and it seems to be, it takes in a uh, video IDs list and it puts out a video IDs list. I thought it might be converted to, um, might be converted to uh, videos with their feature values, but um, uh, it's, it's kind of on the fence with, it's, 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 there's really not great material out there for it. It's really ambiguous, but this seems to be how, how it's working. Um, so we do that, and then we return the video IDs list. It starts with just the user ID getting sent over, and then we get our video IDs list back. And it's a longer list of like maybe uh, hundreds of videos, um, video IDs list. I didn't mean to first get stuff like that. Oh, well. And we're going to then take that video IDs list and we're going to send those over to the ranking service. So right now it's just like, hey, there's these videos. 
Um, I don't know which one you guys prefer the most. So, uh, it's annoying. Okay. So we're going to send them over here and we're going to return back um, a video IDs list that is, wow, okay. And then we're going to return back, should be um, videos with um, scores and they're, they're sorted by those scores. It's, uh, there's another data model over there. It's going to be a logistic regression. It's a, re it's a regression. It takes your data point and it gives it a score. And then we're just sorting it by that score. Um, so let's go ahead and describe that data model a little bit more. It takes a video. It sounds like it takes like one. So you're going to be making multiple calls through your data model, but it should be deployed with your ranking service. So that's not a huge issue. Um, and so then it gives you a video just as a score. And it will, yeah. And then we return that back over here. And then you get your, your, uh, ordered list of videos, just like that. Um, well, uh, seemed like you might have video feature store attached over here on this thing I was reading, which I feel makes sense. So it might actually feed in the video with the feature value. So it's like turned into a more normalized um, thing. Um, okay, was there anything else I wanted to handle? Um, I, mean, I still kind of want to talk about the way that it's deployed, how you deploy it. Is that, um, so this is a classifier, so it needs to be trained and then um, Regression models also need to be trained. So they're, they're both going to have, um, they would both necessarily need to have a um, uh, model training workers. They're both gonna have that. And then, um, I mean, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to pull in the data from somewhere. And so, uh, saying data warehouse. It's probably a good one for that. Um, yeah. Curved. Here we go. And stick it more like over here. Like that. That way we can also have one over here. And then uh, so you're going to train it. And then you're going to put it out into um, a model store. Should have like version controlled um, models. You should be doing A-B testing of those models. It's just gonna be like a um, object store. Um, so I've I've actually seen um, like Python pickle files. Um, you could train a scikit-learn model. Um, that's uh, scikit-learn. They have really good documentation. I have it. Uh, I have it brought up in one of my other videos too. It's where I learned a lot on my own with uh, machine learning. I took a couple of classes in college on machine learning, um, but like you, you, hands-on experience is kind of important and uh, they, it has some really nice um, like toy data sets. And then it, it's like the documentation itself on each of the models is pretty great. Um, yeah. But like, so you could train a model in scikit-learn a classifier, like a neural network or naive Bayes or, or SVM or something. And then you've got that like Python object of like a trained model. 
it's like, well, if I kill this Python session, I'm going to lose that model. And so like, what do you do with it? You can turn it into this thing called a pickle file, which allows you to like export it into and like save it as an actual file. And then when you exit Python and reopen it, you can load it back into uh, your, your Python session. Um, yeah. So you can, for example, have pickle file. There's a variety of other things though. It's that's, that's all I have personal experience with in terms of um, persisting a data model to um, disk. And then um, you could have a uh, run deployment. It's a thing that we've had before. Um, run uh, deployment. Yeah. So whenever you end up doing a deployment, that is what we'll have there. That would go to there. It's going to deploy the whole service, um, but instead of just deploying the executable for the service itself on a machine, there's a copy of the data model too that goes on each of the machines for your horizontally scaled service. Then, um, our data warehouse is going to have to get its data from somewhere, but um, I think we'll just go ahead and let that slide this time. Uh, none of the resources I saw online for this problem really went this far and talked about this whole piece of the uh, problem. Um, and I talked about it in some of my other videos, so I think we can go ahead and let it slide this, for this one. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to do? Um, if there is some kind of way to involve, I, I, I'm pretty sure that you don't use reinforcement learning for this problem. But if I saw it covered in Alex Shue's book, that would be like pretty cool. I think this term at least needs to get called out for this problem though in the book's coverage. Um, I think I got covered everything I wanted to though. Oh, there's a nice white paper on this. Yeah, um, it's like the YouTube Watch Next paper. It's, uh, I think, like an actual white paper on uh, how YouTube works. It's pretty solid. And then, oh, for this model matrix factorization, um, Netflix is kind of like the king of it from what I've seen. They've kind of been using it for like over a decade or it, it just seems like they're really involved in um, this particular little niche of um, recommendation systems. Uh, for quite a while. Um, I think that's it. That, yeah, that, that's probably enough for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll let you guys go. Um, thanks. Uh, see you next time.